Drum beats are a huge part of modern music and a huge part of our culture. So many people are making drum beats because if you have a phone or a tablet or a computer, you can easily make these beats. So people are getting really comfortable with the idea of writing beats. And for a lot of folks, it's actually their first step into learning music. So you can actually take that part of your mind that thinks about drum beats and that part of your musicality that works in terms of rhythm and apply the concepts and a lot of the lessons you learn from learning to write beats towards writing for all kinds of other instruments and making full arrangements for a whole ensemble uh, with pitch and melody and all that too. Essentially, beats are low sounds and high sounds and their relationship. And that has a lot to do with everything in music. So what I want to do today is a really cool writing exercise and sort of exciting process to uh, take a drum beat and just unfold it into a band arrangement using some sort of taking advantage of the technology we have here. So he, first of all, you want to record a nice beat with MIDI and get that MIDI information. Here's the beat I'm going to use for today's example. And it goes on like that. I like it, so uh, I thought it would be a nice foundation for this writing. And so what, the, what I did first was I just copied that beat from a drum track onto a piano track. So now I have a piano sample playing the exact same pitches as in the drum beat. So the drum beat had the kick drum on C, the snare on C sharp, and the hi-hat on F sharp. So now you're going to hear that played on a piano, a nice muted piano sound. And it's kind of crude, but also very exciting how easy it is to just copy the MIDI from the drums to another instrument. We're going to go a lot further than this, but check it out. It's already good enough to get you excited and start thinking about writing stuff. Um, but it's such an easy thing to do, and you never know exactly what's going to happen. So what I want to do, actually, though, to go a little further, is now make a separate track for the kick, snare, and hi-hat pitches in our piano here. So I'm just going to copy them three. So we'll have our lowest sound, the kick, on the bottom, then the snare, and then our highest sound, the hi-hat, on the top. And in, for each of these, we're just going to go in and... Uh, erase what we don't need. So for the kick, we'll keep the kick, we'll get rid of the snare and hi-hat. For the uh, snare, we get rid of the kick and hi-hat. And then finally for the hi-hat, you get rid of the kick and snare. So now everything's isolated to its own track. And uh, if I play now, it'll sound exactly the same as the piano did just a second ago. So nothing's changed yet. So what I want to do now is I'm going to take this kick drum rhythm and turn it into a melody. So here's what the rhythm looks like. It's a dun, 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 and so on. And here's the melody that I've written for that rhythm. So the rhythm's the same, but now we've got melodic pitches in A minor happening. So here's what that sounds like now. So it's kind of weird sounding by itself, but that makes sense because the kick drum by itself is a weird sound. Um, it feels like there should be more stuff. So anyway, now what I'm going to do is take the snare rhythm, which is just this sparse thing here, and I'm going to replace that with some melodic material. And my melodic material for this is very simple. Rhythm's the same, note is different. I just have this very high D now, um, and the D paired with the kick drum, the D's up here, and the two together sound like this. It still has that ogre romping through the woods, eating sheep kind of sound that 
is you know kind of lame but the snare rhythm there it adds just one extra dimension of stability and reinforcement to the kick and the contrast that it pre presents to the kick rhythm is actually a relief from the monotony of the kick um, so already adding one dimension helps a lot but now we'll add this third so I take the hi-hat rhythm here and I'm going to replace it with this melodic material now. When you pair that with the snare and kick, you get a slightly more interesting texture, now in A Dorian. Or C Lydian, however you want to look at it. And uh, that's nice, but it's a lot better when you bring the drums back in. Here we go. Since the snare and hi-hat are pretty close together in terms of pitch, like on a piano, this note here that's playing, which is D, is very close to these notes here. Um, and the uh, kick melody is something you could play with one hand. So as a result, this is very playable by one piano player. You could have one piano player play this whole thing. And now you've already turned the drum part into a pretty cool uh, piano part. The reason it sounds pretty good, I think a big part of it is just because the drum beat sounded pretty good. So you've, you've got this good sounding drum beat with nice proportions between low, middle, and high. So naturally when you add melodic material that's cohesive tonally, you're going to get something that's just generally, that generally fits. But we can go even further. These are all on the same timbre. We have all three of these tracks now on piano sounds, but what if we have them on very contrasting sounds. So our hi-hat is now this synth sound, it's kind of strange. <laughs> Everything still sounds very ogre-like. And now our, our snare is this piano, it's very choppy, right through, Pow! cuts right through. And our, our uh, low sound, our kick, is this bass. And so the three together sound like this. And of course it sounds kind of funky without the drums. And we'll bring in the drums now. So that's starting to be uh, closer to an arrangement that I would want to hear a band play. The MIDI sounds I have now are a little bit too sterile. There, there isn't any variety in the velocity, the like loudness of each note. There isn't a lot of variety in how the notes are being performed. So getting some humans to play these things would be great, but another thing you could do is learn the parts and play them in to get a little bit more of that human touch. So what I'm gonna do now is just do a little bit of mixing, see if I can make that difference happen on my own, and come back and show you what I've got. All right, here's how it sounds. It's all, it's interesting. You know, it's a start. You could put some cool vocals over that pretty easily. I'm a silly modern girl. I'm a silly modern
I changed? I, uh, first of all, I chopped up the groove a bit in general to make it flow in a way that I felt just, I just liked it more. I liked this flow a little more. It's definitely different. The bass being more repetitive and less of having less for variety in the kick drum itself, I think helps. Um, I put a lot of reverb on the mini piano, which is playing in unison with the snare. Uh, so that I think helps add a little cool vibe. I added a bit of a warbly kind of effect on the bass. Give it a little bit more motion. And the I, I created an electric piano part to, de, to double the hi-hat as well in addition to this spooky sound. And the electric piano just sort of reinforces the spooky sound with uh, some useful quarter notes. Those dong, dong, dong quarters I think go a long way to reinforce that. And then the drums are just, yeah, they're just chopped up a bit. I've got a little fill in here. Some tom stuff. And I doubled the whole kit in general with a different sound. So I have this kit, which is all like distorted and uh, has delay on it. And then I've got this kind of tight electronic kick. So when you put all that together one more time, you get this. 